Welcome to the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized them and rushed about. That whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his flock. And all who touched it were healed. The gospel of the Lord. Psalm 23 says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Have you ever had a time when you were burning the candle on both ends? The demands of home and work were relentless. And then you found yourself with the worst case of bent out ever. It seems to be built in. If we do not take time to rest, the Lord will force us to take time out. What is your most favorite retreat? Where is that for you? Where is your quiet place of rest? Do you go there often? For me, Linda's farm was the perfect retreat. However, locally, I find the hermitage at Megringham Nuns a retreat, somewhere where I can hide myself from the busyness of this world. Sometimes when you are addicted to busyness, activity, and productivity, what we call a busybody, you actually don't know how to be still, quiet, and rest. And going on on a retreat forces you to be still and know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus and his disciples must have created quite a buzz in their day as crowds followed them everywhere they went. He and his disciples are looking for a lonely place, a place separate and apart from the demands of the crowds, a place where they can go and just rest for a while. Jesus was calling his disciples to a practice he was familiar with. Serving others can be a draining task. He renewed his strength by separating himself from the cries and crisis of this world and spending time with God in prayer. The disciples are now called away from the world to learn the source of strength for ministry. When the disciples returned from ministering, we can only imagine the extent of their impact, not only on those upon whom they brought healing, but also on their loved ones, who must rejoice to receive healing. You must be amazed, as I am, at this level of enthusiasm from the crowd. This shows how people respond when their hearts are touched and their spirits are moved 
and they recognize that something is going on of immediate importance to their very existence. What is far more intriguing is the revelation of Jesus' divine character as he responds to all that he has seen. Mark 6 verse 34 says, He saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. The good news is not that people were interested in Jesus. The good news is that Jesus was interested in them. Yes, the good news is that Jesus had come into our world to announce the nearness of the kingdom of God and to declare the opportunity to escape the power of sin through repentance and faith. He was and will always be Jesus, the lover of souls. Feeling the emotions of heaven, he responded to human need with power and compassion. The people he encountered found in him a shepherd's heart. This is the calling of the whole people of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus' life and ministry clearly touched us and teaches us that if we do not receive from God, we will have nothing to give back to God. The call to rest goes much deeper than simple physical rest. It is in times of being led beside still waters that our spirits are refreshed and renewed. Unfortunately, for most of the times, we allow the noise of this world to drown out the still small voice of God. Spiritual burnout is one of the most significant factors for the powerlessness of us Christians. From our gospel today, the retreat Jesus wanted for his disciples did not fully get off the ground. It turned out that the boat ride was the only seclusion they got. Jesus and his disciples lived lives of tension and delicate balance between receiving from God and giving to God. One cannot take place without the other. Although the rest the disciples thought never happened, it is still important that one is intentional in seeking to get away, even if one does not get the chance regularly. As we notice with COVID, all our plans are upside down. Jesus saw the disciples' needs and taught them many things. It is virtually impossible to be always queued up pleasing people, but it is possible to do the things that are pleasing to God. People are in our lives for a moment, but God is with us eternally. As Augustine of Hippo said, our souls are restless until they find their rest in God. Accepting Jesus' invitation is crucial for our lives, for us to live the abundant life that he intends for us. We, like the apostles, are not able to give from a place that is empty. We are not able to be present, fully present to our families, our lives, our work, unless we can forever long be fully present to Jesus in a place that nourishes our very souls. Our one task is to put this ahead of all the other things, to open ourselves up to hearing his invitation and respond with the space and time to listen to his call, to take our heavy laden lives and offer it all to Jesus, who will take it from us even for just a little while. Listen to his voice, calling us into perfect peace, the kind that only he can give to re-energize our bodies, minds, and souls. May our place of worship always remain open, not only to meet the needs of those who have responded to the call of Christ, but also to those who are still searching, the great crowd seeking not a celebrity, but a shepherd who will love them always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, we thank you for the example of your son who never missed an opportunity to get away, to reflect, to recharge, to seek power from the source. And the source is you. Grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for service 
of your sanctuary and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven. Gracious Lord, you are the center of our lives and our ultimate salvation. In the midst of all the delusions and distractions of our day, draw us ever close to you. Lord, help us to take the time to be still and know that you are God. Amen. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you always, today and always. Amen.